Good morning, folks. There were no Earth-directed eruptions during the last day on our star, but there is news at both the Earth and Sun, and don't forget that we expect CME impact tonight from the M flare a few days ago. NOAA agrees Earth could see it happen tonight, but NASA says it should impact midday tomorrow. Folks, I could tell you I'm not having fun with a location-based quake forecasting, but I'd be lying. After our first try was a big hit in Sumatra two days ago, last night we thought that Chile, Peru region was showing signs of energy change. We issued a nine-day alert for the area, which would be useless if it was one of our global quake watches, which are usually a 24 to 48 hour deal, but it is a bit harder to know when a specific area will shake or how big it will be. And I honestly thought we were on our way down globally with quakes, waiting for that next coronal hole over on the left, which will be here in three to four days. But that last edge of the current dark coronal hole turning right was still facing Earth last night. We've been having phi angle shifts associated with recent coronal hole streams in the solar wind as well. And the moon is in a 36 hour period where it conjoins both Mercury and the sun for a new moon. The first M6.9 struck a few hours after the warning was issued, and another struck a few hours after that. The fact that these happen so early in the watch period is indicative of my still being very new to the practice. We will get better over time. Also had a volcano begin to awaken just north of Peru and Colombia, that's Nevado del Ruiz. So despite there being no more eruptions in Earth's direction, we've got a crowded southeastern quadrant. We've got some sunspots here and a pretty large plasma filament. The filament is close to the equator and then wraps back down and circles back towards the limb, destabilizing this morning. Coming to spaceweathernews.com, we find that the solar flaring has declined since that flare two days ago. The sunspots are still in decay at this point and the magnetic mixing at the flaring group is falling apart hour by hour. Let's step up from X-ray flaring to gamma ray bursts and see that we took one early this morning, again, in the south. The solar wind yesterday was not only above average with the coronal hole stream, but dense waves and super fast clusters, almost too fast, cause a level 2 geomagnetic storm that is still reverberating this morning. Let's take a look at some things that happened from the storm. First, we see that either a tremendous magnetic disruption registered or GOES-15 actually had a break in its magnetometer from the storm. Either way, it was a seriously electric day, and we also have effect candidates in many forms. The transformer fires are terrific candidates for being solar-induced. The top article of the day is about Mars Moon Phobos. Scientists say it is slowly being ripped apart. Link found below. Let's come to the United States where the convergence line between pressure cells is going to bring tornadoes to the Midwest tonight and down into the Missouri and Gulf States region underneath the convergence. In Europe, the lows up north drive the weather across the continent while the highs in the south keep them clear. Down under we see high pressure wrapping around the southeast edge of the low and that's going to be the prime weather area here tonight. Over at suspiciousobservers.org, we're going to try to get you the second deeper look episode about location-based earthquake warnings tonight. Until it's out, go ahead and check out the last one we posted. It's our first look at the OLR anomalies indicator. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.